Hey everybody, attempt number three. I'm trying to get used to these new programs. Painting in the sky. Thalo blue and white. Blending on the canvas, brushing horizontally back and forth. Oh, uh, in case I forgot to say hi, hi, and we're painting a um, rustic wooden wagon in a landscape scene. And you're going to use sap green and cad yellow for the grass. Horizontal strokes all the way across, getting darker as you come down to the bottom. Okay, so you had to let that dry. Now you're going to take some burnt umber and a liner brush and sporadically, squiggly, twiggly, put in some trees and branches. Try to be really loose. Um, when you put the leaves on, you're going to cover a lot of this up, but you'll be able to see the branches poking through. Once you get them in, you can go back and thicken up your trunks and make sure the color is solid. So, I um, this is my third attempt at doing this, this voiceover. I just got a new video camera, new microphone, new editing program, and for some reason um, the, the talk is not matching up to the video, so I'm testing something a little different on this, and hopefully it's going to keep up. So I'm tapping in with a very stiff bristled brush, dry brush, just sap green. The right side of the screen is not darker than the left, that's just the way the lighting is. That's my next thing to work on is lighting. When you finish this, you're going to come back in with a second layer with cad yellow mixed with your green to make a lighter color. We're building shadows and depth. Don't cover up all your dark green, just tap it in sporadically around. Then you're going to come back a third time, adding a little bit of titanium white into your cat yellow sap green mix and make an even lighter color. And again, don't cover all your colors. You, do, you want the depth. And you can really see it on the right there where the, the light is not washing it out. Now I'm thickening my trunks with the uh, burnt umber and making sure they connect to the ground. <laughs> Now I'm going to take that same stiff bristled brush and tap in some grass in the background. Um, you, you really want a few of these brushes, you know, they're just old ratty brushes. Keep a few of them on hand because as soon as you get it wet to rinse out a color, then it, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't give you that nice crisp like um, like you went through and painted individually all those blades of grass that you don't want to have to do. But you're going to tap this in, then you're going to come back with a uh, light purple or whatever color flowers you would like and just tap in some flowers. These are all back in the distance and they are mostly going to get covered up but you want them there so that in case you can see through it, something's there for it. Okay, so I let that dry, and I traced in my wagon wheel, or wagon wheel, my wagon, and I got the image from Paint My Photo. And I'm back to my burnt umber and a round detail at the moment for the smaller areas. I'm going to block in the color with the burnt umber. I'm going to blend some white into it, and... I'm not too worried about, you know, how solid the coverage is because it's going to have a lot more going on top of it. You know, we're going to paint the wheels on top of it and then we're going to paint foliage into the wagon and it's just, there's a lot of things going on in this wagon. So since, you know, as I was painting this, I would stop the camera and let layers dry, take a break, think about what I wanted to do. And I think what was going on with the voiceover is I was doing just one long voiceover as I'm watching the video, and it wasn't keeping up. So now each time the uh, I get to a new break in the film, 
I'm stopping and starting like a whole new voice voiceover for that section of the video part. So we'll see what happens here. Hopefully the third time's the charm. And I am trying to distinguish the bed of the wagon from the sides, the inside sides of the wagon. And blocking in in the back there around the wheels. I will go in between the spokes. I'll just need to switch up brushes. Back to my detail brush. Those are like support beams underneath the wagon. When you um, get to the wheels, you're going to switch to burnt sienna instead of using the burnt umber so that you have a different shade of brown so that they'll stand out from it and then the burnt umber on the main wagon part will it'll look like shadow so it, it'll be pretty cool that it looks like it's in shadow that's the negative space in between the spokes you want to make sure you paint that in So now that the, the brown is getting on the canvas there, you can actually see the shape of the wagon and the wheels. So in the, the previous two recordings, I was telling you a story about the horse next door, and it was pretty funny. But telling it a third time, it isn't funny anymore, so I don't feel like telling it, so you guys just have to wonder what the horse story was because it ain't happening now <laughs> but I would appreciate some feedback on how it, if the video was better because um, new camera new editing program new microphone my homemade um, scrap uh, I call it an L pod for holding my camera so that you get to watch me paint the right side up instead of from the side or upside down. And uh, yeah, it was interesting <laughs> to say the least. So, burnt sienna on the wheels, can go all the way around, all spokes, all three wheels. You don't see the fourth wheel because it's hidden because of the angle of the image. You just fill it all in using whatever brush you're comfortable with. Just because I use a particular type of brush does not mean that you will want that same brush. You'll use uh, titanium white to come in and do highlights. And you'll come back with burnt umber and a very small dry brush and do uh, shadowing. You know, because where there's light, there's dark. Oddly enough. So. Uh, Girl Scouts are out selling Girl Scout cookies again. Miss Alex sent me a picture of her Thin Mints knowing that they're my favorite cookie. And when I asked if they were for me, she said, no. That's not right. Still painting in those wheels. Adding a little highlights now. Like I said, used the titanium white for the highlights. And, um, you can use a detail or however, you just want to kind of dry brush it in. Make sure you don't want it too solid. Refer to your reference photo so that you get like. If the outside of this wheel is highlight, highlighted, then the 
on that same wheel, the opposite side, the inside of it, would be highlighted. Gives it lots of dimension. And then, of course, the burnt umber for uh, the shadow areas. Put it in like um, around the, the, the on the bottom, around the spokes where they meet, so that it looks like it's setting into it instead of just hidden behind it or just floating out there. See my arsenal of brushes sitting next to my canvas. Plus I have a jar sitting on the counter that's full of brushes. And I right now I have two, four, two, four. Eight paint brushes I used. Because I can't ever make up my mind what I want. Don't uh your liner brush when you use a liner brush don't leave that sitting in your jar of water rinse it real good and then set it aside otherwise it bends up your bristles and it gets shaped funny and then won't work right i just noticed i threw mine in the jar the whole time i did this painting i rinsed it real good and i set it to the side now i just noticed it was in my jar of water that i haven't washed my brushes yet but yeah, so, actually, no, nine, nine brushes, because that was my little dry brush. I used nine different brushes for this, because that's just how I am. So now I am, so now I am tapping in leaves, dark, straight, uh, sap green, and then... A uh, cad yellow mix with the sap green and then I'll come back with the third color and tap that in says so we have our our, our darks our midtones and our highlights and I'm using a very small bright and varying my brush stroke covering parts of the wheels just you know trying to fill in my wagon There's my, uh, my lightest color green there. Hopefully this is lining up with the video. I'm getting a little discouraged. <sighs> Just don't know. Too much newness all at once. So now I'm going to paint in some grass. And I'm going to use an angle brush. And this particular angle brush is also what they call a comb brush. And you're going to use lighter greens towards the back, farthest away from you, and it gets darker as you come closer, varying your brush strokes, the direction, varying the size. The closer it gets, the longer, the taller the grass is, because that's just the visual perception and they go all different which way different colors now because we painted that um base painting foreground of the grass so it's it that helps a lot with it instead of trying to just uh paint it on a plain white canvas now i'm darkening in between the spokes and underneath the wagon because that would all be shadow I'm going to do it with that big old angle brush of mine. Now you really should go ahead and do all your grass all the way across before you keep moving on. 
I, I don't know what I was thinking, you know, it's like, oh, I want to add this here, and I want to add that there, and then it was like, oops, I forgot to do this, forgot to do that, but go all the way across. This I'm taking a very small detail brush, and I'm putting in some little daisies. They could have three petals, four petals, six, pet six petals, ten petals, however many petals you want. Then come back in with some cad yellow and dab them in the center for the pollen center. Just a little dot. A little dot like doing polka dots. I'm painting some grass or a bush right now. I forgot to slide the uh, canvas up because I had zoomed in so that you could see what I was doing on the wheels and the leaves. I forgot about it. But I'll push it up here in a minute and uh, you'll be able to see. Okay, I'm trying to get back in sync here. I'm painting in more grass in the background. So we've got the wood stenciled in on the bottom. <clears throat> I, I'm just, I'm so confused with this program. I apologize if this isn't working. So I'm painting in some more grass in the back. That bush on the bottom, it was the same thing as we did in the wagon. Dabbing in the leaves, three different shades of green, varying the direction. The grass back here, it's the same thing. Using the angle brush, lighter, farthest away, getting darker as it comes closer, varying the length of the grass. Now I'm putting in another bush. Straight sap green, tapping, varying the direction of the leaves. We'll come back with another two different shades of green and some flowers. Pretty soon here we'll start on flowers. It's the second shade of green. Well, at least this time on my third attempt, I'm seeing uh, some of the video. So I must have be getting somewhere here where I'm kind of figuring out this program. So now I'm using my purple and my white, and I'm making flowers. That part that looks white is actually a very light purple. And the dark purple might look blue to you, but it's not. It is purple. It just depends on your... Uh, the, your monitor on your computer or your phone but it is purple and I'm just like going tap 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 or tap tap and just just tapping them in not nothing real detail and they look perfectly like flowers you know it's not like painting one close-up where that's the whole focus of the picture is a flower so doing the purple and the white in the wagon and the bush down below the end of the wagon, we're going to do purple and white there. And the bush that is off into the right bottom corner, we're going to use yellow. Because, you'll see here in a minute, we are going to add a couple of flower pots to the back of the wagon. And we used yellow flowers in that. So I felt like we needed to put some yellow flowers in the corner. So I used uh, some cad yellow some white and burnt sienna to mix this color kind of makes it a very light terracotta color now if i would have used probably a little less white or a little bit more um burnt sienna it, it would have definitely looked more terracotta so i'm trying to put some shadow and some highlight in to give it that rounded look which you'll see here in a minute works quite well i'm gonna do it on both of them now they're that front pot is a little closer to us so it's a little bit lighter I didn't want to make them like 
twins. And now I'm going to get that dry stiff bristle brush again tapped into some white and yellow and uh, a little green and I'm bouncing it, tapping it on, bouncing it, letting it spill over the sides like it's just overgrown and uh, that's pretty much it for those pots there. Throwing a few daisies off in the background there. With a little teeny tiny detail brush of mine. Putting the yellow dots in the center. I hope this is still lining up. I didn't realize we just switched to a new clip. Yellow flowers. We're almost done. Gosh, I hope this works.